Okay, welcome to your 10th tutorial session. Uh, last week it was on Wednesday, sorry, it was our session number nine. And we were covering binomial distribution and Poisson distribution. So today we're going to continue and do the activities relating to the binomial distribution and the Poisson distribution. And also we're going to look at the counting rules, but I'm not going to dwell too much on the counting rules. Um, I'm just we just gonna do two exercises and I'm just going to also show you on the calculator. Please make sure that you are muted all the time. Um, so yeah, so let's begin with. I uh, remember we talked, we spoke about the counting rule and we said the power. The, the first counting rule, counting rule, which is the power rule, um, it says if any one of the k different mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive events can occur on each of the n trials, the number of possible outcome will be equals to k to the power of n, which means it's the number of outcomes to the power of uh, the event. So. <clears throat> Uh, we said if we have a die and uh, we roll that die three times, then the possible outcome that can happen will be uh, 216. And we also looked at the counting rule number two, which is the multiplication rule, which says if there is if there are k and events which is K1 event on the first trial, K2 events on the second trial, and K nth events on the fourth trials, of K, um, and so forth and so forth up until the ninth K, uh, the ninth trial event. And if we want to know how many possible outcomes we can have out of uh, choosing any of the scenarios, um, and we looked at an example of if you have to go to a park, a restaurant or a movie and you have three packs, four restaurants and six movies, how many possible outcomes or how many possible ways can you go and visit all of the three um, environments? And we said it will be three times four times six, which will give you 72 different ways. I am going to apologize for this because I am visiting in Pretoria and I'm staying in the location, you know, locations. Ash, there's music. There will be music playing, but I hope it will not disturb our uh, our recording as well. Okay. The third counting rule is the factorial rule, which tells us the number of ways we can arrange items. And we looked at how many number of ways can we arrange the five books on the bookshelf. And we said it can be n times, uh, if there were five books, um, then it will be n times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and it will give us 120 possible ways that we can arrange those five books. Then we also looked at uh, counting rule number 4, which is permutation, and with permutation we said there is an order or preference in terms of how you do things, therefore we, uh, permutation tells you the number of ways you can arrange object from n object in an order or when you have a preference and we used an example of having five books that are we're going to put on uh, three shelves and we wanted to know how many number of ways can we place those books in an ordered manner uh, and because we, we we have an order in terms of how we're going to do things Therefore, we use permutation and permutation in NPX, uh, which is N factorials divide by N uh, divide uh, N factorial divide by N minus X factorial. Mm -hmm. And I said when we come to this part, actually, I wanted to show you how to do calculate the factorials um, for those who don't know or who were lost when we were doing the the question so I can actually go back to the or the first one which was the this one uh, the factorial so factorial 
on your calculator. This is a Casio calculator. Those who are using a Casio calculator, your factorial is on top of your x to the power of a negative one. Uh, it's an x factorial, it's not an n, it's an x factorial. To calculate five factorial, you just press five, you press shift, you press uh, the button where x factorial is at, and you will get five factorial and then press equal, and that will give you your factorial. And those who are using a Casio, you do those steps. Those who are using a sharp calculator, uh, with the sharp calculator, sorry about that, I need to bring back the slide. With the sharp calculator, we also want to calculate the factorial. So your sharp calculator, uh, those who have it that looks like this, that has the green letters and, and orange letters on top of the buttons, your n factorial, you need to look for it. It is on, you need to look carefully. It is orange and it's on button number four. And it is an n factorial. Also, you go and say five and you go second function because it's written in orange. And then you press four and you will have n factorial as five factorial and then you press equal and that will give you 120. And that's how you're going to do your factorials. To do permutation, so when we answer questions on permutation, in this instance, we know that we are arranging five books in an order uh, in, and put them on the three uh, bookshelves. So we, you know how to do the factorial, so I'm not going to do that part. I'm going to show you to how you can do the NPX. On the Casio calculator, you clear your calculator, and then we first going to put five because five is our N, so we say five, and then we need to press the NPX button. It is on, if I can look for it, uh, it's on multiplication button. So then it's written in orange. I'm going to press shift and then press multiplication. And then I need to press three and I have N, P, X, O, R. And I press equal and that will give me 60 different ways. Similar on a sharp calculator, to get the same answer, clear yeah, our calculator. Uh, five is our N and our NPR is on button number six. So we go into press five first and then press second function, press button number six and then press three and press equal and that will give you 60. And that's how you will calculate your counting rule. The other counting rule that we learned was the combination. With combination, order does not uh, matter, or there is no preference in terms of how you do things. So combination is the number of ways of selecting X object from an N object, irrespective of order or preference and we use combination and we use this example where we said when we have five books and to, and going to read three of them the same question as we used the last time it's five and three we have five books and we can place them or read them uh three three books that we're going to select three books that we're going to to, to read so because here yeah, there is no order in terms of how we're going to read those books or there is no preference in terms of how we're going to read those books, then we use combination. And we found that that combination is equals to 10. On your Casio calculator, I'm going to go clear. Casio calculators, your N, NCR is on button division. And you do the same. Five is our N, 
shift division and three equal and that is five combination of three and the answer is 10. Similar, you will have on the sharp calculators, those who are using sharp calculators, you're going to press five or your NCR is on button number five, but here we need to press five for N second function and press the button five again and press the button three and say equal and there we get 10 and that is what i wanted to show you in terms of using your calculators okay then we went on and and looked at the binomial distribution and we said with binomial distribution the um, events are sequential uh, trials that happens n with n parameter and there are always two outcomes possible outcome for each trial and um, we refer one outcome as a probab as a success and one outcome as a failure and from getting a success and a failure we can calculate the probability of success and the probability of failure. And we know that the probability of success is denoted, denoted by the uh, pi and the probability of failure will be one minus pi, which is one minus the probability of success. And both of the events or both of the trials um, needs to be mutually exclusive and they also have to be collectively exhaustive and each event needs to be an independent event that happens okay. the other thing i need to mention as well i think it's not part of the slides is that a binomial distribution comes from, remember it's part of the discrete distribution and a discrete distribution is a discrete random distribution, uh, random, it comes from a discrete random variable. Therefore it uses either the measures that can be, or it uses measures that can be counted. And if it's measures that can be counted, those measures are an integer measures as well. I'm going to look at the exercise that we did. Then we also looked at the characteristics of a binomial distribution in terms of the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. And we said the mean of a binomial distribution is your expected value, which is your n times the probability of success, your variance, which is the population parameter, the variance, it's given by n times the probability of success times the probability of failure and your standard deviation is the square root of your variance and you need to know how to calculate all of this then we went and looked at the probabilities how we find the probability and we said with a binomial distribution we use the formula and you need to know that we can use this formula as well to answer the questions on the binomial distribution. The challenge becomes when you have a greater than or equal or less than or equal questions where you have to calculate for multiple probabilities at a point. Then this formula becomes complex because it will take you forever and you don't have enough time in the exam to calculate the probability of x is equals to zero plus the probability of x is equals to one plus the probability of x is equals to three or two probability of x is equals to three probability of x is equals to four and so forth it's gonna take you forever so instead of us using the formula we're going to use the table and we said on the table the tables are designed in a way that the top probabilities that you get, you're going to use the n and the x value on your left. And the bottom probabilities, the bottom probabilities at the 
at the bottom here, there are probabilities. Remember, I said because this table is on one page, this one is on another page, the probabilities are cut off at the end of the other page because they meant to be one page which has all these probabilities. Uh, so the probabilities at the bottom of the page correspond, so all these probabilities at the bottom correspond to all the n and the x value from this side. So it means when you read the probabilities of more than 0 0.99 or more than 0 0.55, you will use the bottom part to read your table. If you're using probabilities of 0, 0,1 between 0, 0,01 and 0, 0,5, oh, let's yes, 0, 0,45, I'm going to say 0, 0,45, you use this. So let's say from here to there, you use the left. From 0, 0,9 to 0, 0,45, you use the right. 0, 0,50, you can use either one it will give you the same answer uh, because it's 50-50. And we know that the sum of all probabilities should be equals to zero. Even within um, within the whole, the sum of all these probabilities should give you one. So the, if you add all the probabilities within the, let's say it is in this N, the sum of these probabilities in the end should give you one. The sum of this probability of success and the sum of probability of success at the top should give you one. So we need to always remember that. OK, so that is the table that we're going to use for the binomial. So when we do the exercises later on, then we need to know how to use the table. Then we looked at Poisson distribution and we said a Poisson also because it's from a random discrete variable as well. <clears throat> but with Poisson, it uses the area of an opportunity. Unlike with binomial where it uses the probability of success, here we use the area of, of opportunity, which is our lambda. Um, and we know that in terms of the characteristics of a Poisson as well, the, the expected mean or the lambda or the average is the same as the variance. Remember that. The mean, the expected value or expected events, the average, the lambda, the variance are the same. And the standard deviation is the square root of your variance or is the square root of your lambda. And we did the exercise. And we said also with Poisson, you need to know how to also use the probability formula to calculate the probability of a Poisson. And also, like I mentioned with the binomial, that it, it becomes very complex when you have multiple probabilities that you are calculating, then we rely on the table. But sometimes in the question, in the exam, they might ask you, um, the Poisson formula without you calculating it to the extent, um, but just to, to make sure that they understand that you know what Poisson formula looks like and how do we calculate the Poisson probability as well. So you must remember the formula. That is the Poisson formula and we can use it to calculate the probability of an event or we can use a table. And we also looked at the table and we said, all the tables are broken down by the lambdas and all the lambdas have different X values from zero up until the end, they differ within the table. So one table might have lambda, uh, the lambdas and then have the X of zero up until seven, the other one might have zero up until 12, the other one might have zero up until uh, 14 and so forth. So you need to be very careful when you work with the Poisson distribution. You must go to the exact lambda table in order for you to know uh, the value of your X, your actual value of your X. Okay. Not going to do that exercise. We, oh, sorry. I don't want to close. 
because I've done all the activities in here. So today's session. Um, actually, we need to start with today's session. Sorry about that. I need to open this session. Today's session should be part two activities. Okay. Apologies for that. Okay. So let's start. Exercise number one. Suppose there are three positions to be selected out of 12 for a committee. How many possible arrangements can they be? That is your exercise. What is this question? What the question is asking us? Is this, is this a counting rule question? And they are telling us that there are three positions that needs to be selected out of 12. Is this a combination or permutation? Was there order or preference? Talk to me. Or you can post your answer on the chat. Remember we we're still using the chat as well. Or oh, unmute and talk to me. I think we are lost. Pardon? I think the silence is we are confused on what we should be doing. But I've asked you a question. Is this question, I, I gave you the hint, I said, this is a counting room question. And then I asked, is this a permutation question or a combination question? And then you were you were quiet. Then I went on and I asked you. If you read the statement, is there order or preference given on that question? That's the question I'm asking. Is there order or preference? There's no order. There is no order. There is no order. So if there is no order, then is this a permutation question or is this a combination question? This will be a combination question. It is a combination question because combination says there is no order or preference in the way you arrange things or the way you do things. So this will be your NCR question. So based on the question, what is your N? Is your N, is your N not 12? Your oh. N is 12. What is your X O R. That would be three. And calculate your combination. Uh, I get two hundred and twenty. Is that correct?
Are we all in agreement with 220? Yes. Okay, I'm going to only use the Casio calculator here. So let's see. So we said this is NCR, which is so on our calculator we go and we say no why are you not correcting me <laughs> now when i'm typing the five and the threes it should be 12 and three so we first press 12 then we go shift and we go division and we press three and equal and the answer will be 220. Number two, there is a president, a secretary, a treasurer to be selected out of a 12 committee. How many possible arrangements can they be? Is the order or preference given? No. Yes. How many of you are saying yes? How many of you? Let, let's start with the, the yeses. I, I, I had one yes. Are there other people who agree with the yes? Yes. Yes. Are there other people? Are there other people who are agreeing with the no? Okay. Those who are saying yes, there is preference. Why are you saying there is preference? Isn't that they are ordered from president to treasure? Pardon? I was asking, isn't that this order because it's from president all the way down to treasure? Okay. Another reason? Anyone? Or are you all agreeing with what she just said? Yes, I agree. Okay, yes, I because there is an order in which they uh, listed them as well, but also they gave a preference in terms of which positions they need to be selected. They could have just said, let's select three people the same way as we had in the first one. They said, Suppose there are three positions to be selected out of this. There is no order or preference in terms of who they are selecting. They just wanted to select three people. Here they say there is a president that needs to be selected, a secretary that needs to be selected, and a treasurer that needs to be selected. They give you a preference in terms of what positions, and also they give you the order in which you will have to select those, or the order in which the committee will be constituted. And that makes it, if there is an order, this question then it is a? Permutation rule. Are we calculating combination or permutation, permutation here? We calculating permutation, so it will be NPR, which is? Almost the same as what we had before. Our N is 12, and the three positions are our X. So NPR or NP3. And calculate what is the answer.
The answer is 1,320. 1,320. So we say 12. Shift and PR on a multiplication 3 and equal. And we get the answer of 1,320. Okay. And that's how you will answer the questions in terms of the permutation combination or also if they give you in terms of the other multiplication rule. Ask your ask yourself questions. Is are the, are the, the question or the statements given? Do, did they tell me that there is an order or is there clearly? Can I see that there is an order of how things happen? Or are they no order or preference in terms of how things need to happen? Or so you need to ask yourself all those questions. Or are they giving me multiple things that I need to arrange or do? Then it's multiplication rule. Or are they giving me only one thing and they're telling me how many possible uh, ways I can get to that? Then it is your factorial. Or are they telling me this to the power or I need to do X amount from the same, uh, have repeat the same events of as often as possible, then it is your power. Because if if I toss a coin three times, I am creating, I'm using the same coin, which has two outcomes, which is the head or the tail, but I'm creating three multiple events out of it. So then it means I'm tossing it three times out of those two outcomes, it will be two to the power of three. So you just need to ask yourself all those questions as well. Okay, and that is the counting rule. So now let's move on to the binomial. Now in the exam, let, let me just say it this way. In the exam, the way they will ask you questions, they follow the order in which we do them in or in order they are in the study guide or in your chapters. So when you deal with questions from discrete probability, after the discrete probability, you will be dealing with questions about binomial. But you need to be able to identify the question because you are not going to be told that sometimes you will not be told that this is a binomial question. You need to understand that you need to know that now I'm talking about the binomial. And I'm saying this because when you answer the question, sometimes you will answer the basic probability questions where we also use percentages and calculating pro probabilities and proportions. Then immediately after that, you, you find questions about discrete probability. And we, you will know that with the discrete probability, you will get the table with your X observations and your your the corresponding probability. After that, you will get the questions about the binomial distribution. And those questions about the binomial, it can be calculating, uh, calculating the binomial distribution or under, unpacking and understanding the concept and characteristics of a binomial. So it can be in both ways. It can be calculate the, the probability, calculate the variance, the, stan the standard deviation or the mean, or they can ask you about the content. Remember the past week, someone asked instead, are they asking you how many questions in, um, in your exam paper will be uh, calculation and how many can be uh, a theory? It's a mixture, so you need to be prepared to know both. You need to know the content, the content, and you need to know how to calculate as well. So one of the question is this: Which one of the following statement is incorrect? One: If the value of a variable depends on an outcome of an experience experiment, the variable is called a random variable. Is that true or false? 
Is it correct or incorrect? Is number one correct? Talk to me. Uh, are you all muted? Or uh, am I not audible enough? Lizzie, isn't it false? I, I, I will also, it's false because it says random variable. If you are conducting an experiment, remember now you are in the binomial, in the discrete environment. And regardless of that as well. So when you're creating an experiment, you always get random events happening, isn't it? And those random events have characteristics and those characteristics are variables, isn't it? So number one is correct because number one says if the value of a variable depends on an outcome, so we know that that value depends on an outcome of an experiment that is happening, the variable will be a random variable and that is correct because it will be random. When you toss a coin, it will randomly drop on a head or a, a a tail you're not going to just place it on a head and say but i've tossed it you're tossing it and it will choose randomly on which side that coin will will land it will choose by itself random so when they talk about random you know that the um the events are are also in a way independent because there is no influence from another another thing also so it's a random event that is happening okay so thank number you. one is correct i'm going to skip number two i'm gonna go down to the bottom one so that we 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 talk about the things that we already learned and know about so number five says the probability of an event is always on the range zero to one. That is the probability of an event lies between zero and one. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. That is correct. Uh, I'm going to skip four. I'll go to three. The number of outcomes obtained when two dice are rolled is equal to 36. No, it's not 36, it's 72. When two dice are rolled, a die has how many outcomes? Six. This one? A die has six outcomes. Yes. And if there are two of them, It's 36. 6 to the power of 2, which means it's 6 multiplied by 6, which is 36. That is correct. I'm going to go back to number 4. The mean of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution with the parameter n and pi, probability of success, is equal to n multiplied n times pi. Is that correct? The mean or the expected value of a binomial, what is the formula of a binomial distribution? The mean of a binomial distribution. It's n multiplied by pi. Is that correct? This question is correct. 
because that's all what they are asking you. The mean of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution with the parameter n and pi is equals to n times n. The mean is equals to n times pi or n times the probability of success. That means that is correct. Number two, a discrete random variable takes on any numerical value with a certain interval. Here yeah, we're talking about discrete random variable. Is that statement correct or incorrect? Just to help you because it's the only one that is incorrect in this instance. A discrete random variable takes any value but not from an interval but of an integer. Because a discrete random variable comes from a counting process because this comes from a counting process. And only those that comes from a a measure a measured process, which is like your your temperature, your height, they will take an interval value. So the interval is those that comes from a continuous variable. And we will deal with those ones in the next chapter chapter or study unit six when we do normal distribution. Continuous variables. So the only one that is incorrect is number two. Okay. Your exercise three, suppose that an admission test for a certain university is designed so that the probability of passing is 45%. Find the probability that among five candidates who take the test, more than three will pass. How do I know that this is not a basic probability question. If you look at this, they're asking you find the probability among five. It will not be a basic probability. It will be uh, because they give you your N, they give you your probability. So they give you your N, they give you the probability, and they give you, they're asking you to calculate the probability of pass. And since here they say the probability of passing, then you can assume that this is your probability of success. And then they talking about binomial distribution. So this will be your probability of success. That is your probability of success. And your five is your N. And the question asks, find the probability that among those five candidates who took the test, more than three will pass. So it means what is the probability that X is greater than three? Find that probability. I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to open the table. So let's go to the table. We need to find the table. Table E six. There we go. We need to rotate it. Rotate. Okay, going back to our question. Our question said,
n is 5. So I need to go find n 5, the probability of success of 0 0.45 because it's 45%. And I need to find the probability that x is greater than 3. That was the question asked. Find the probability more than three will pass. So the first thing remember that we need to look at is the probability of success. So the probability of success says 45. 45 is at the top, so it means my N, I'm going to use the N on my left. And because it says the probability of X great greater than three, then it means we need to find the probability. The probability of X is equals to four. Plus the probability of X is equals to five. If I go to N, I must be there. The N will end with this. Uh, our X values will end with the same as the probability, the N value. So the last value of the N will correspond to the last value of your x. So it means I'm only calculating the probability of x plus 4 plus the probability of x equals to 5. So going to the 5 block is this probability of 45. Then I'm only looking at the last two values. So I'm just going to say 0, 0,11 two eight plus zero comma zero one eight five and we go to our calculator and add them point one one two eight plus point zero one eight five equals and the answer we get is zero comma one three one three going back to our question this is equals to zero comma one one two eight plus zero comma zero zero uh, zero comma zero one eight five, which is equals to zero comma one three one three, which is option number three. Option number three, and that's how you answer the questions. Any question? Are you happy? Yes, thank you. Okay. Autism South Africa has found that 50% of the people with autism ASD struggle with social interaction. Assume we randomly select six people living with ASD. Probability of success. Our N. Consider the statement A to C. A, the expected number of people with ASD struggling with social interaction is three. B, the variance of the number of people with ASD struggling with social interaction is 1.5. C, the standard deviation of the number of ASD struggling with social interaction is 1.25. Which statement or statements are correct from the above? So number one, you need to go and calculate the expected mean, which is pi times n, or n times pi. Number two, you need to calculate the variance, 
which is n times pi times one minus pi. Make the screen bigger. And number three, you need to go calculate the standard deviation. I'm just going to use that function. Standard deviation, which is the square root of pi or n times pi. Times one minus pi. Minus pi. So you have five minutes to do the calculations and then we recap. Ask if you want to ask a question. I'm going to get a glass of water just now. I'll be back. Are we winning? Are we winning? Yes, done. Okay. Let's give those who are still busy a chance.
Are we done? Yes. Okay, see, four people answered. Okay, let's do it together. A. So A, want us to calculate the expected value, which is n times pi. What is our n? Six. 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 And times our pi, or probability of success, which is 0 0.5. And when you calculate this, what do you get? Three. 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 And what do you get? 1.5. And we know that the standard deviation is the square root of a variance. Therefore, it is the square root of 1.5. And what do you get? Uh, 1.225. 1.225. So which one of the statement is incorrect? That is, oh sorry, it's correct. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. Therefore, number five is the correct answer. Next question. Autism South Africa found that we've read the statement before. We know that this is our probability of success, which is 0 0.5. And this is our N, which is equal to 6. What is the probability that only three people? How do we represent that probability? We need to find the probability of X. X is equal is to equal, three. Is greater than. Sorry. X, X is equal to three. X is equal to three. And you can use the formula NCR pi to the power X, one minus pi to the power N minus X. Or you can use your table. Go ahead and use the table, and I will go ahead and use the formula on here. So,
<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to assume that Carabo has used the table. That is why. She... Yes, I used the table. She was, able, she was able to find the answer quickly. And for some of us who are still busy with. Oh, come on. What did I do now? With calculators, it might take us long. Okay. So I'll do it on the calculator. I've already put in the building blocks so that we don't have to waste so much time on it. So <clears throat> I have filled in my NCR. Remember the in front, the NCR, NCR is the same as N factorial divided by N minus X factorial of the binomial. Instead of me writing all this, I can just represent it as the combination formula. So the combination, six, shift, combination three gives me 20, times 25 to the power of 3 equals give me 0, 0,125 and it will be 0, 0,125 again on this. Because 1 minus 0, 0,5 will be 0, 0,5 to the power of 3 will still give me the same answer as the same as the previous one. So 20 times 0, 0,125 times 0, 0,125 gives me 0, 0,31. Five. That's what I get, which is option three. When we go to the table, we are looking for. Let me delete this one first. Mm. Okay, so we were looking for any six. We need the probability that X is three and our pi is 0, 0,5. So we go to our pi, 0, 0,5. We can either use this side or we can use that side. It doesn't really matter because it's 50. Because mm -hmm. here at the bottom is 0, 0,5, 0 as well. So we can go here and look for where X is three and we will still find the same answer. And we go this side where X is three. You will still find the same answer because the, it is 50-50. So you will get the same answer. So. And that's how you will use the table. It only works for both sides if you are using 0, 0,50. Otherwise, if it's a bigger value than 0, 0,05, we need to use the bottom and the right. If it's less than, we use the top. It's less. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. Yes. You are on yes. 5 and not 6. Where n I'm, is 5 and not 6. I'm on 5, not 6. Yes, you are right. Sorry, my bad. And okay, it's fine. Sorry, six, three, I'm sorry, my hand is not steady. Zero comma three, one, two, five. 
so also on five feet it gave me the same answer and also if i'm coming from six i get the same answer on there yeah. okay so moving on to question number six which of the following statement is incorrect? Poison and a binomial distributions are discrete probability distribution. Is this true or false? True. That is true. A Poisson distribution is characterized, uh, characterized by one parameter, namely the mean per interval or the average per interval or the distance or volume denoted by lambda. Is that correct? True. That is correct. I'm going to skip three. I'm going to go to four. A binomial distribution or a binomial experiment. The random variable X takes on integer values from zero up to N. That is X of 0, 1, 2 up until N, where N is the number of sample size or the number of trials. Is that true or false? True. It is true. If you are in doubt in terms of the questions as well, you can use your table to just look at the table because the table will guide you. They start at 0 to N value because it ends at the n is three, it will end at n of three. If n is six, it will end at n x, your x value will end at, at six. And because these are integers, not interval values, they do not have decimal values. Okay, that makes it correct. The standard deviation of a Poisson is equal to the square root of the expected value. Is that correct? Remember the expected value here is lambda. Since we said it there, the mean or the average or the expected value or interval or distance. So the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the expected. Is that correct? Yeah. That is the formula of the standard deviation, is the square root of your mean. So therefore it means this is correct. Number three, a binomial distribution is characterized by one parameter namely the probability of success denoted by pi is that correct no it's not correct No, it is not correct because it is characterized by two parameters, which is n and pi, mm -hmm. your sample size and your pi. Right. So this is incorrect. So that is the answer that you were looking for. Now let's calculate the probabilities. Suppose that 10% of butterflies have damaged wings. If a random sample of five butterflies is selected, what is the probability that none of the butterflies have damaged wings? Similar. That is the probability of success. That is your N. You can calculate. What are we calculating? 
x is equals to zero. We're calculating x is equals to zero. Therefore, you can also use the formula. Oh, you can use a table. We use the table. I need to go to the second one, rotate. We're looking for n pi of 10%, which is 0 0,10, and the probability that x is equal to 0. What is our n? Our n is 5. So if our n is five, then we need to go back to the or to the first one. Sorry, we didn't have to come here. My bad. So our n is ten. N is five. Pi is zero comma one zero. We need probability that x is equals to zero. Do we have an answer? It should be the quickest one. Zero. Where n is five, probability of zero comma one, where x is zero. Zero point five nine zero. Zero point five nine zero five. That will be zero point nine five zero five. That probability there. That one. That is the one that we're looking for. That one, 0 0.5905. So, zero point five nine zero five which is option number two okay Using the binomial distribution, if n is equals to 5 and the probability x is equals to 3 is 0, 0,1323. The probability of success is? What is pi? That's what they are looking for. Hint on how to solve this. You need to go to the table. You need to go to where X is three in the table. Where N, where N is five. And look for that probability inside the table and go out. So you will find that probability there where N, N is five, X, 0, 1, 2, 3, where x is 3, where that probability set, you go out, you will look for that probability at the top of the table. It's option 3. That's what you need to be looking for. So let's go there. So looking for 
n n is equals to 5 x is equals to 3 and the probability that x is equals to 3 of 0 comma 132 uh, what is it 1323 so we go we come here we look for n is 5 x is 3 we go and with the table we just go on until we get 0 comma 132 which is that that is that probability then we need the probability of success which is the answer is 0 comma 30 so that is the answer we need for so please could the person with the TV mute themselves if they're not. The average number of adults with ASD consulting with neuropsychologist per day is poison distributed with the mean of 1.5. So here we're talking about poison, poison of 1.5. So it means we're going to use either the, the, the formula to calculate the poison, or we're going to use the table. So what is the probability that on any given day, a neuropsychologist will consult with only one adult? What probability are we calculating here? Probability that X is it greater than or is it equal or is it less than? X is equals to one. X is equals to one because it says on any given day it's only one adult. So we calculate in the probability that X is equals to one. And you can use the formula. Uh, which is lambda to the power x times e to the power minus lambda divided by x factorial. Or we can use a table. Or we can use a table. So I'm going to use uh the calculations you go and find the value on the table and tell me if it's any of those i will complete the formula in the meantime no i'm not going to complete the formula in the meantime let's go find the probability on the table so we're looking for the poison we need to go to the table for poison which is broken down by lambdas so we need to rotate so our average it's equals to 1.5 so we need to go to a table that has 1.5 and there is our 1.5 what else are we given we are told on any given day, it's, we need the probability x is equals to 1. So we need to find the probability that x is equals to 1. So we just go to the table, go here, look for x is equals to 1, and that probability is equals to 0, 0,3347. Come back to our table. This table value 0 comma 3 was it double 347 0 comma 3 3 4 7 and it is none of these values there so we know that that is not the question we're looking for need more information to calculate the probability not necessarily let's see one more option because we know we're given the probability, we have to still have the table to finish. Our lambda is 1.5. Our x is 1. Times our e 
is minus 1.5 divided by our one factorial. Is that what we're looking for? That's what we're looking for. And that is the answer. that we're looking for. Any question? Absence of questions, then we move on. The average number of adults with ASD consulting with neuropsychologists, we've read this sentence before, is 1.5. What is the probability that at any given day a neuropsychologist will consult at least seven. What are we calculating here? We're calculating the probability. X. Is it less than? Is it less than or equal? Is it greater than? Yes. Or is it greater than or equal? Here, here. Greater than or equals to seven. Therefore, it means we need to find the probability. We need to go first to the table because we cannot determine how many of them we need to be calculating. So we need to be calculating the probability of greater than or equals to seven. So 1.5, we're back to the table. We look for, we need to calculate the probability that X is greater than or equals to seven. So on 1.5, lambda average 1.5 greater than or equals to 7 is here so we cannot do anything with those ones so greater than or equals to 7 starts from there down there so we need to calculate the probability that x is equals to 7 plus the probability that x is equals to 8 plus the probability that x is equals to 9 that's all what we need to be calculating, which is 0, 0,0008 plus 0, 0,0001 and plus 0. I'm not going to say 0, 0,0000, which is 0, 0,0001. That is the probability that we're looking for. So which is option two, probability that X is equals to seven plus the probability that X is equals to eight plus the probability that X is equals to nine. If you wanted to use the, the formula, so you will say lambda X times E to the power negative lambda divide by x factorial plus and you do the same lambda x times e to the power minus lambda x and the last one will be lambda x how do we write lambda now lambda x e to the power minus lambda divide by x so you will substitute seven everywhere where you see x eight everywhere where you see x nine way everywhere where you see nine and eventually at the end you should have zero comma zero zero eight and zero comma zero zero one plus 0, 0,0000. And that should give you 0, 0,09. That is if you're going to use the table, the, the formula. Next. Given the mean, what is the variance of number of adults? This should be easy should be straightforward. What is the variance of a poison? One point five. 
it will be 1.5, which is the same. Remember that the mean, which is the mu, which is the expected mean, which is the average, is the same as the variance, is the same as the variance, is the same as the variance. So that is the mean. They are the same and they are the same as lambda. They mean one and the same thing, lambda. Next, let X be a random variable representing the number of mistakes in a textbook. Suppose the mistakes occur at an average of two page. Remember, average is the same as lambda, is the same as the expected, is the same as the mean, that. So, average, which is our lambda. What is the probability that at most three? In terms of a sign, what are we trying to find here? Probability? What less is or equal to three. Pardon? Less or equals to three. Less or equals to three. Therefore, it means we'll need to find, because I know that it is two and is three, so it's fine. We're going to need to find the probability that X is zero plus the probability that X is one plus the probability that X is two plus the probability that X is three. So go into the table, or you can use the formula. So we need to go to two, and two is also on the same page. So three is somewhere there. And my hand is shaky, bear with me. So you can also use your count, so you can say, Always it starts with zero, so you can say zero, one, two, three, and not do it the way I am doing. So you need to add all of them. Because the lambda is two, so we need to add zero, comma, one, three, five, three, Plus zero comma two seven zero seven plus zero comma two seven zero seven plus zero comma one eight zero four. Sorry about that. One eight zero four. Using my calculator, point one three five three plus point two seven zero seven plus point two seven zero seven plus point one eight zero four equals zero comma eight five seven one Is your next question?
do you have the answer? We're still using point two. Okay, say it is option four. So we say, what are we calculating here? The probability that X exactly five will just be equals to five. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Should be nine. Should be zero comma. Zero three six one, which is option four, and that is correct. Hendrik and Lungile and whoever liked your answers. Next, assume that X is a Poisson random variable with the average of six. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So I'm going to go this way and go scroll to six so that we can have this table close by as well. I'm gonna make it bigger. And go to six. Six is also right at the end, at the edge. So you will just do a count. Zero, one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna represent them. Okay, so the first one, we need to find the probability that X is equals to zero. Is it correct? Yes, it's correct. We're looking for the incorrect answer. So that is correct because the probability that X is zero is 0, 0,025. Number two, the variance is 2.45. Is that correct? You do not have to even think about it. We are dealing with poison. And it says the average is six. The mean. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not correct. But let's just double check the others. Probability that X is less than three, it means you're going to add from two. So you're going to do probability that X is zero plus the probability that X is one plus the probability that X is two because it says less than three. And that will be correct because it's 0 0.0446 plus 0 0.149 plus 0 Ms. Liz, can I ask a question? Yes. Just to verify, um, so the variance and the average would have been the same, so the answer would have been six for option two for it to be correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's verified. So point zero zero two five plus point zero one four nine plus point zero four four six <clears throat> equals zero point six two. 
So this would have been correct. For greater than five, so it means you need to start from here, add all of them, or you can say it is one minus the probability that X is less than or equals to five, and therefore it means you just start from here, add all of them up and subtract them from one, of which I'm going to assume that that is correct if you do that, because we already have our incorrect answer. And here it says find the probability that X is between. So for between, you are going to, let me see if I can remove the ink. So for between, and it does not include two, and it does not include five, therefore you're going to say X is equals to three plus the probability that X is equals to four which is just those two values and that because it's not too many, I can calculate quickly, which is 0 0.0892 plus 0 0.1339 equals 0 0.2231, which is correct. In the exam, you don't have to validate. As soon as you get to the answer and you know that that is incorrect, just tip that one. If you're not sure, just double check. Okay, next question says, suppose that the daily fake news follows a poison distributed with the mean of 0.2, so it means we need to go to 0 0.2 in order for us to answer all the questions. Let's go find 0 0.2. So we need to go to the table that has 0. There we go. So we can go to the side and just minimize it. Sorry, 0 0.2, and we can just, so we know that our lambda is 0 0.2. So we need to find all of this. So the first one says the probability that there will be one fake news, and we're looking for the incorrect one. What probability are we looking for here? X is equals to one. X is equals to one. And for a 0 0.2, is that correct? Yes. Yes. That will be correct. Number two, the probability. Probability that there will be two fake news. So what are we looking for here? X is equal to two. X is equal to two. So where X is equal to two, is that correct? Yes. correct. Uh, that is correct because where X is equal to two, it's 0, 0.0164. Number three, the probability that at least three fake news. What are we calculating here? X is greater than three. X is greater than or equal to three. Therefore, we need to add all of them. The probability that X is equal to three plus the probability that X. So if I look at this, I don't have to worry about where there are zeros because adding them won't make any difference. X is equals to zero, uh, three X is equals to, is equals to four, but you could also just do X is equals to five, X is equals to six, and X is equals to seven. Um, so if you add zero and zero and zero, you'll get zero. But yeah, we have zero comma zero zero one one, 0, 0,000. So the answer will be, is that correct? 
Yes, it's correct. Yes, it's correct. That would be correct. Okay. Um, the probability that there will be at least five fake news is equals to zero. Uh, sorry, I removed option five on this one, so there was a none, none of the above. I removed it because I didn't double check all these answers before I removed it. There was number five. Every time you will get the number five. The probability that there will be at least five fake news will be the probability that X is greater than or equals to five. And that will be five plus six plus seven. And we know that they are zero comma zero zero zero. So that would have been correct. The incorrect one will be none of the above. That is the only instance where none of the above works in this instance. Because everything else is correct. OK. Suppose that a number of daily, oh, we already read this. What is the probability that on any given day there will be no fake news? What are we calculating here? X is equal to zero. X is equal to zero. So if we use the table, are we getting the answer? Where X is zero? is 0 0.8187 so it means that is incorrect that is incorrect and that is incorrect the only option left is for us to use the formula lambda x times e to the power negative lambda divide by x factorial and actually there was also here none of the above Okay, so coming here, we need to replace the value of x and lambda. Our average is 0, 0,2 to the power of 0 because our x is 0 times e to the power minus 0 0.2 divided by 0 factorial. So what is 0 0.2 to the power 0.2 to the it's power one. of 0 is equals to 1. Any number to the power of 0 will be equals to 1. So that will be 1 times e to the power of e 0 0.2. And what is factorial? 0 factorial? It's 1. Zero. She is going to be taking less justice. Is equal to one. So our zero factorial is equal to one. And therefore the answer one times e to the power of zero is the same as e to the power of negative. So we can say this will be the same as as that e to the power of negative 0 0.2 as you can see yeah it says e to the power of a positive i think there was an errata on this question because then this the way it is at the moment it would have been incorrect but if there was a negative there it would have been the correct one otherwise then none of the above will also surface will also be the correct one in that instance because there is no negative there. Okay. And you, like with any other um, handouts I give you, I also give you multiple questions that you can go through and answer them on your own. 
they, we ended up on number 17. So you will need to go. This is from here is your homework. Or your additional activities that you can do on your own before, and for your preparation to do your assignment too. And if you get stuck, you can ask on WhatsApp or on my UNISA. Otherwise, from 17 up until 25, 20, why do I have two 25s? Up to 27, you can do on your own. I want to do 27 with this one minute that is left. So 27 says, uh, I can just close everything and make it the presentation. 27 says a random variable X has a binomial distribution with unknown probability of success and the mean of two. So they didn't give you the probability of success, which is your pi, but they give you the mean. The mean, we you know what the mean is, is the expected value. They give us the expected value. And we know how we calculate the expected value is n times pi. And they give us the, the, the sample size. So they say, what is the probability of success if the sample size is equal to 8? So we know what our n is. So because they gave us the mean, you just substitute the mean, which is 2. Our mean is 2. Our n is 8. And we need to find pi, which is our probability of success. And therefore, our pi will be divide both sides by 8. 8 will cancel out on the right. And 8 will divide by this side. So this divide by 8, divide by 8. 8 and 8 will cancel. And here we'll be left with the pi. And here will be 2 divided by 8, which is the pi will be 1 over 4. And what is 1 over 4 is 0 0.25. The answer would have been option number 1. So I've done that for you. So you have up until exercise 27, 26 to do. So it's 26, the 225s, and... Twenty-one, twenty, nineteen, eighteen. So if you do all those and you find any challenge, let me know. Let's have a discussion on WhatsApp or on my UNISA. I will let you know when the videos are uploaded. Um, with that, thank you for coming through. And if you have any question on the work that we did so far, let me know. Otherwise, have a lovely, lovely weekend. See you on Wednesday when we do normal distribution. Also, bring your statistic tables, statistical tables. Miss Lizzie? If there are no questions, have a lovely weekend. I have a question. Yes, you may ask. Yes, um, with with regards to the table, the probability table with for binomial binomials, um, if you're not uh, given a, like for instance, the probability that you have doesn't show on the table, then what do you do? Do you just go ahead and just use the formula? Uh, Let's say the, what do you mean the, the probability, probability that they it doesn't show on the table? Yeah, like if if you are given a probability of zero point six two, for instance, oh, and there's no okay. zero point six two on the table. Yes. So if they give you this probability, then you must go ahead and use the formula to calculate mm -hmm. the probability of a binomial distribution. This is if you are given like any of these probabilities. Uh, uh, I think only 0 0.9 has 0 0.91 up until 99. The others, they are just in-betweens. 
uh, they are in tens or fives, multiple of five. So it's 80, 85, 75, and 30. Yeah. So if they give you the, the other ones that are in between there, or there, or there, or there, you just need to use the formula. But it will be highly unlikely that they will do that to you. Okay. They might give it to you in the assignment but not in the exam. In the exam, they will prefer to use the ones on the table, but in an assignment so that they, they test on the knowledge of using tables and also using your formulas, they might give you those ones. Okay, um, let's say for instance, you have a probability of 0 0.8 and an X value of um, zero. So from the table, how do you read that? Do you go to the one that's at the bottom? So and you use what, is, what will be your N? Let's start there. What will be your N? Your N will be six. Your N will be six. So yes. if you go to N six, sorry, my bad. Let's make it smaller. So it will be on the first page where N is six. So I need to rotate the table. Just hold on. Hold on to that. So our N, our N is six, and you said the probability is equals to 0 0.8. Yes. So which means it's 0 0.80. Zero, yes. so, so it means it will be at the bottom of the page. So you will go to 0 0.20 at the top because we know that 0 0.8 and 0. 0 are complement of one another so it will be on on this 0 0.80 so and you want the probability of x is equals to 0 now yes so since it's at the bottom here you're going to go to the right and say okay. n is 6 x is 0 okay. and that probability will be 0 comma 0 0 1 okay no no now i get it Yes, you don't use this site because if you use this site, you will see that the probability will be wrong. It will be 0, 0,2621. So you okay, need to my, be very careful. My mistake was I was going directly to the table where it says 0 0.80. Uh -huh. That one at the bottom when I started reading from there. So now I see you only have to rotate the one that's at the top no, but and remember this one th this one also now is not rotated you can uh -huh. see that it starts from the right will be this side it starts from seven eight nine ten uh -huh. so, 0 0.8 will be there but the value that i'm looking for for the n is not here the same way on this one is 20 so this table also has some 11, 12, 13, 14. There are other probability tables. So on, on this, they cut them off. And then they only give you those three pages. But there are other pages as well. There is probability of 15 or where N is 15, N is 16, N is 17. But they don't exist on this now. Um, so... You just need to be very careful when you use the table because this part and that part are one thing. They are one table combined. It's just that they are printed on two separate pages. So this okay, is no, I, I this. get it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if there are no other questions, I'm going to post the video.